Well, good evening, everybody. It's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and we're here tonight to uh, take a look at the card that I made today for the 2017 Aus Autism Matters blog hop. For those of you that came by, I sure appreciate it, and I do hope you took a few minutes to maybe click the Donate Now button and give a few dollars. If everybody just gave a dollar or two, we sure could make a difference. Um, so, the first question I have, if anybody, when people start to come on, is uh, if you have any problems hearing, I do have the fan on at my crafting table because I'm hot, and so... You know, I'll be a lot less cranky if I can stay cool. So anyway, this is the card, and I kind of sneak peeked it for you this morning. This is the front of the card, and then on the inside we have another sentiment and another little lady with her red and yellow hat on. And then, of course, we have an envelope with uh, more decorations on the front, and we've decorated the envelope flap as well. So there's two stamp sets that are involved in this particular uh, card. The first is in the Occasions catalog. It's the Beautiful You stamp set. This is a two case stamp set and it's really quite gorgeous. Um, lots of things you can do with it. Very artsy and uh, and can really make you look like you're an artist without, without a whole lot of effort. On top of that there's some very nice uh, sentiments so if you don't have this I would highly encourage you to get it and remember it may not make it into the annual catalog, so that means uh, if you love it, you need to get it before the Occasions catalog uh, retires on the 31st of May. The second stamp set, now this is one that I haven't played with really until now. Um, this is Playful Backgrounds. It's in the annual catalog. Um, and it's just, it's very simple looking. It's easy to pass over when you're going through the catalog, but if you take a look at some of the... Uh, some of the, the samples that Stampin' Up! gives us with this, uh, you'll see there's just some very cute cards. You can get a background very quickly, very easily with it. So um, it's a good, good little stamp set for $16. It's hard to beat it. It's photopolymer, which means it's easy to position, and uh, you're ready to go. Sorry, I'm just refreshing my computer to see if any of y'all are on so that I don't miss any comments. Hi, Jean. Hi, Julie. Hi, Paula. Hi, Karen. Sorry it took me a minute. I sometimes forget that I have to refresh my screen. Um, I'm not sure if you heard me say I have my little desk fan on here at my craft table because I'm, um, I guess I'm power surging. I don't know. And so if you have any, if you have kind of like a dull background <laughs> roar, let me know, and uh, I will turn that fan off so that uh, I'll be grumpy, but you can hear, and that's really kind of what's what's more important. All righty, so you saw the stamp sets. This is the card we're going to make. For those of you, if anybody's following along, um, I hope you took a look at the card cuts. You need a 5 and a half by 8 and a half piece of Whisper White cardstock. Now, you can use the thick Whisper White cardstock. I know a lot of people love it. I... I like it, but I prefer the plain because I'm I'm a heavy layerer, -er -er. <laughs> and so this this lighter cardstock gives me a little wiggle room with weight and thickness, so that I can put all those layers that I like. So anyway, this is eight and a half by five and a half by eight and a half, scored and fold scored uh, as your card front at four and one quarter. Then you're going to need some of the. Uh, Sending Love DSP stack. Now there's a lot of different uh, designs in this one, so you can pick any of them. I picked this one because I wanted to be able to color. The autism colors are red and yellow and two shades of blue, so I figured when I made the ladies skirt and dress, I would color the pattern in yellow. Um, but this one would have been fun as well. Would have looked a little bit uh, Julia Robertsy in Pretty Woman. So anyway, that's your choice, of course, to pick. And uh, then you're going to need some other pieces of Whisper White cardstock. Let me pull them out here. I had them carefully arranged and then I screwed it up. Okay, so you're going to need two pieces at 3 and 5 eighths by 4 and 7 eighths. That'll be a card front and an inner liner, respectively. And then your art panel is 2 and 5 eighths by 3 and 3 eighths. Then you'll have two mats. Um, perhaps you noticed it's a double matted card. I've got it matted on Night of Navy and Daffodil Delight. And uh, 
you need two pieces of four by five and a quarter and one at three and three quarters. Yeah, Karen, you're right. This is all this one is definitely a heavy card and it's also thick. You know, it's a quarter inch thickness um, is the is the maximum before they start adding postage. So when I whenever I make a card I and send it, I almost always just put a second stamp set on it. Um, just just because. So anyway, back to the cardstock mat. So you'll also need two pieces at three and three quarters by five of Daffodil Delight cardstock and then one at two and three quarters by three and a half. Um, and since Beautiful You is a clear stamp set, not photopolymer, um, I made rather heavy use of my stamp on my jig. So we're going to do that again tonight. And I'm going to put this out of the way before I get ink on it that I don't want. Because that's what I do, is I get ink on things that I don't want. So first, jump out of the box. Let's get the right stamp image. We'll use our dancing lady. Our dancing lady. Of course, I hid my big enough block. Duh. Right. There's dancing lady. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp her onto our stamp -a jig Hi, Liz. Thank you for joining me. We're busy making a card with the Beautiful You stamp set and some playful backgrounds. So, see how quickly I lose stuff, people? I don't know. I'm starting to worry about myself. One second it's here, the next second it's gone. It's gone. Oh, thank you, Paul. I appreciate you sharing. Hopefully more folks will come on. So to use the stamp -a jig you just uh, put the corner of the block up in this corner of the tool and stamp straight down on your acrylic block, and then it's ready, and it will help you to um, position your stamp where it should go. So then we're going to stamp it. Now, because this is smaller than my acetate, I'm going to put a sticky note up here in the corner to kind of hold it in place so that once I get everything positioned, it stays put. That looks like a good spot for the lady. So then you, once you've done that, you put your tool back in the corner of the acetate panel and pick it up. Leave the tool in place. If you move it, you have to reposition. Yeah, Julie, you're right. Almost everything I send is extra postage. And then put the uh, corner back in and straight down. Hold it a second and pick it up and we get a good image. So that's awesome. And we'll just leave that there because we're also going to um, stamp our sentiment that way. Now this one we're going to stamp. Let me put this away. You know, I can get ink places really fast. And what I'm doing, because I'm going to use this image again, I'm leaving her on her acrylic block, and I'm also not wiping off my stamp of jig acetate so that I already have it and I don't have to redo that later. Um, it's one of the few, few times I'll do something efficiently. All right, now we're going to get our sentiment on here. And this we're going to stamp in Knight of Navy. And I'm going to make sure I have it right side up, which I do not. Get it positioned again on our stamp -a jig And then we'll put her right there. Kind of eyeball it to make sure it is straight. And then we'll pick it up. One double check. Alright, good enough. Alright, now, we'll put this aside for just a second, and let's uh, go ahead and make us a card front, shall we? Moving this out of the way. Alright, taking one of these uh, pieces that is 3 and 5 eighths by 4 and 7 eighths, 
we're going to use the, uh, we'll start with the, the filled in circles in playful background. And I'm going to put this on my um, yeah so Jean the reason many people don't put their uh, their labels on their clear stamps for some reason the sticky stuff that is what is the is is the labels boy did I just say that bad once you put these sticky things on your stamp it sometimes makes them not want to stick to the acrylic block very well. And I've always, I've tried all sorts of different things. You see things all over YouTube and Pinterest about how to make them stick. And the final really easiest answer is just don't put them on. If you don't know, if you can't tell what the image is, stamp it on your scrap paper. I've always got grid paper underneath where I'm at. And you you get to see it clean, but the reality is there's there's stamps all over the place. So I would recommend, from my experience, just don't put them on there. All right, so it's one of the additional joys of photopolymer stamps. So we're going to start and we're going to stamp this uh, solid image in soft sky. And there's really no rhyme or reason because I'm not a poet. We're just going to stamp this all over. You know, this this really is kind of a sleeper stamp set. Um, it doesn't look like much, and when you when you look at it in the catalog, and to be quite honest, I just don't even remember why I bought it. I must have seen a sample of something somewhere that made me think, "Oh gosh, that's really cute," and so I, I bought it. But I, it's like I said, it took me a minute. It was certainly not the first thing that I bought from the new catalog. All right, so the next image that we're using is this uh, is this clear circles one. And, and this is why it's so fun, because in about 30 seconds, you've got a cool little background that can go with everything. So you'll remember that the, uh, the colors of autism were light, were two shades of blue. I picked soft sky and night of navy. And sometimes with these, it's good if you can turn them a little bit so that it, I think you'd have to really be looking for a discernible pattern, but it's kind of like laying flooring tile. You, you want to mix things up best you can. So there you go. One each little card front. Um, really easy. We'll step that aside. And then we're going to um, mat this on a piece of three and three quarter by five uh, something yellow. Daffodil Delight. There we go. There you go. See what I mean, Karen? It just came, it, you just completely miss it. Part of the problem is it's on one of those colored pages, I think. I mean, I know it is, and I think that's part of the problem. So uh, we're going to just use a little fast fuse. Right up until it runs out. And then I'm going to use liquid glue. Because, you know, you can. And then we're going to put this on our yellow, which a, a, a good demonstrator would call Daffodil Delight, since that's what it is. Now, on this card, um, the uh, this piece right here is, stamp, is uh, popped up with Stampin' Dimensionals onto the Knight of Navy. So when we get a little further down the road, I'm going to use uh, liquid glue to put the Knight of Navy directly to my card base. And then I'll pop the card front on with Stampin' Dimensionals. And then this is another pop. And then the hat is another pop. So, so this one is definitely um, kind of a thicker, thicker card. Okay, so now we can set this aside for a second. And we'll get into the meat of the card, which is our paper piecing. So let me put this away. And I'm keeping these little um, stamps out and mounted because I've got room for them. And I'm going to use them on my envelope shortly. All right, so let's get the lady back out. And we're going to stamp all of her in basic black archival ink. And then we're going to stamp her again. I'm going to stamp her on a little piece so that I keep her. And all I need really on this second stamp, uh, we're actually going to stamp her head twice. There's one head and 
two heads. All I'm really looking for is two more hats. Okay. So now, all I'm going to do is cut out her dress. And first I'm going to cut around her. Okay, on this particular image, um, because of the way her hair is, I do the hat and her, and her skirt all in one, or her dress, sorry, all in one cut. Um, it just makes it look nicer. And then we'll pop a hat over the top of that so you'll get a little bit of a dimensional look. Okay, so remember when you're fussy cutting, you push your cardstock or your paper clear back to the uh, to the V of your scissors. Don't don't snip way out here. It's just a surefire disaster looking for a spot. And also, it helps if you get rid of the excess so that you don't have it in your way. And then hold strongly. Finny, lay down, bud. It's time to lay down. Sorry. Um, you hold the uh, the excess in your opposite hand, your non-dominant hand, and you kind of pull it a little bit so that everything is solid. Okay, I think people have trouble if they're trying to be kind of willy-nilly, wishy-washy with it. you got to take hold of it and show it to who, who's boss. And then you just turn the paper, not so much the scissors. If you try to do this a lot, you're going to end up with a with a pretty erratic cut, okay? All right, so I just turn the paper and get it along. And there's a few little spots here where you're like, I don't know if that's skirt or, or what that is. So I'm going to say that is skirt. And then the skirt goes up her leg like so. And then turn and go like that. All right. Okay. And take your time with it. It isn't very hard. It's just it's something that you have to make a little thing. Thank you, Karen. Um, I was really scared of fussy cutting when I first started making cards, but then uh, my friend Sue Prather, who just now today had her very first blog uh, post and her very first blog hop, she was one of the people in the autism, we were at the um, World Card Making Day two years back and she showed me the trick. This trick right here, the one about being sure you've got your paper back to the back of your scissors and that you move the paper instead of the scissors. And once I figured that out, I was off to the races. And there we go. One each little thingy bobber. And it's just too darn fun, so why wouldn't you do it? Okay, so you see, this just sets right over the top like yay. Before we do that, um, I wanted to add another little tiny bit of, um, yeah, what is skirt and what is not. That's the hard part. So, I mean, you know, it's a little bit squishy through here. It's a little bit squishy through her hat, so you just make it be where you want. Who's going to know? Nobody. Well, maybe the designer. Okay, so I just took my um, Daffodil Delight Stampin' Right marker and colored the par everything except the little dots. I left the little dots white because if I was making a sundress this color, the little dots would stay right. I did do one iteration where I colored everything and it was wrong. Well, it was also wrong because I used my Crushed Curry Stampin' Right marker instead of Daffodil Delight, and it just did not look right. It just wasn't right, people. It you know, Finn, you know that that is not your toy, right? You know that, right? You know that it, that is a cat toy. And you also know I can't come do anything about it. Mm -mm, you are too smart for your mom. So anyway, I just get those colored in. Do I think this looks like a sundress somebody would buy, don't you? I mean, shoot. All right. Okay, good. Okay, that's good enough. Good enough. Good enough. And then we'll just use some liquid glue and adhere it to our ladies' dress and skirt. Don't need very much. Try to get a little bit out there to the edges where those little pointy things are. Can I zoom in on the dress? Oh, you're gonna. 
going to test my zooming ability. Let me see. I don't know if I can or not, Julie. How about that? Is that any better? Was that the dress you meant? How about that? Yes. Yes, Paula, he is a true dog. His dad is not here, and his mom is busy, and he knows it, so fie on him. He is killing, currently, Finn, really, stop, come here. Oh, why do I even try that? He's so disobedient when he wants to be. Anyway, it's a cat toy I've had forever. It's a, I call it the catnip cigar. It's just a piece of material covered with leopard print with catnip in it, and the cats love it. <sighs> okay, so there's that. That's how we do that piece. And before I go much further, I think I'm going to add this to my first mat because it's easier to do it before it gets dimensionalated. Finny, that's not very nice. That's not very nice. I'm telling your mom. I'm going to send her a text and say she sold me. Bad dog. A bad and goofy dog also. Okay, so there it is on its yellow mat. Yes, the tweezers are your best friend, I can assure you. Shoot. Alrighty, now the next thing we're going to do is, remember I, I stamped two more hats, so I'm going to do a quick fussy cut on those. Might as well do them both at once. Y'all sing the, sing the Jeopardy music while I do this. And here's a safety tip. Once you have um, cut your second hat, probably would be good to not lose it. Because that just means you have to cut another one. Alrighty, I'll get that going there. You probably don't need to be quite as anal about it as I was right there, but, you know. And then you kind of have to wag where the hat would, the hat brim would go. And here's another little thing you can do with this, with this particular image if you want, and I, I do like to, is I just bring the fine tip of my Stampin' Write marker, my basic black, and I, I kind of just reinforce those edges so that they're going to stand out a little bit on the card. Alright. Give this a little swipe with my uh, Daffodil Delight. Oh. Alright, my stamp. Oh, they're there. Didn't we just put a, put a Stampin' Dimensional on the back there? Probably have to cut it a little bit. Hey, Amy. Move my hands to the left so we can see me cut. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I missed that one, Julie. All right. Trim a little bit more off of there. And then back to the tweezers. My best friend. And then I just gonna cut a little more off of there just because I'm being anal about it. Sorry. Sometimes I forget, and you shouldn't either, so don't be like me. Don't forget that people who get these cards, they don't pick them up and inspect every single little part. They go, oh my goodness, look how beautiful that dress is on that lady. And that maybe they won't even notice that I made a little ink mark there. Oh well. Oh look, it went away. How about that? All right, so that is the artwork. Um, the next piece to do for it is we're going to pop it onto its mat made out of Knight of Navy. Y'all will be glad to know that my dog has abandoned the catnip cigar. It will live to tantalize the cats another day. Okay, now I'm going to unzoom, okay? 
so now I have a, some kind of message. I'm going to unzoom. Hang on, people. My c camera is telling me something, and I don't know what it is. What? No. Done. Okay, so let me unzoom for a second while I have it easy to do. Okay, hopefully that's back to normal. And we'll just get another Knight of, uh, not Knight of Navy, that's a Stampin' Dimensional Mary, not a Knight of Navy. How goofy! I think I'm losing it this week. You guys, I'm so excited, there's only like four more days before we go to on stage. And I get to go to center stage for the very first time. Thank you to everybody who has bought from me and joined with me to help me do that. I am so looking forward to it. I'm going to go with Amy and with Sue Prather, who also promoted the Silver Elite. Okay, so all I'm doing is sticking this down on its little mat, like a Sue, just a, like a Sue. And then I'm going to use some liquid glue and put it on my card front. Now, I'm going to take a little piece of um, real red 3 8 inch stitch satin ribbon. Can I zoom back out? Please, I'm hoping I can. I will try. I will try. I think that's all there is. People. That's all I got. Here, I have raised it up. Is that any better? Hang on. My stand is being obtuse. Is that better? Hopefully that's better. All right, we're just going to use about this much. It turns out to be about four inches. Cut it at an angle. Y'all know that you should keep a scissors that you really only use for um, ribbons and trims like baker's twine and whatnot, and then use your paper snips for paper because it helps to keep them, keep your uh, ribbon scissors nice and sharp. Hey, Patricia. Did that help it? I hope it did. And then we're just going to uh, put a little bit of liquid glue, just a little bit. You don't need a lot. Right up at the very tippy top edge of our ribbon, like so. And then just kind of slide it under like that. Straighten it out, and there we go. Okay, so that is our card front. And when I make a card like this, where I have, uh, where I'm popping up part of the card front and part of it is going directly on the base, I break my own rule and I put that on near the front of my process. See ya, Karen. Have a good evening. Thanks for coming. All right, I'm going to put a little liquid glue. All right, somebody tell me if I'm if you can't see again. The uh the camera is situated such that the screen is kind of um, covered up by the stand holder, the, the holder thingy. So that makes it hard to manipulate that. Okay, so I'm going to just put this on the card front. That's pretty straight. And then this, uh, the rest of the artwork is popped on with Stampin' Dimensionals. So anyway, we're headed to Savannah on Friday. I'm going to ride with Amy and Linda Geiger from our down, from our group. And that ought to be a rocking good trip, assuming I don't fall asleep. I have a sick husband, and as you might imagine, he is on his deathbed. 
any second now it's over for him I'm quite sure and so I've been doing a lot of enabling I'm afraid all right there we go just like that and there's the card front done I uh, did some dithering and some hemming and hawing and thinking about adding some enamel shapes or some pearls or a doily somewhere and then I decided to just let um, when you paper piece like this that's kind of a kind of a big focal point so I just let it happen so let's go ahead and make the inside now um, to remind you what we're what our final look is going to be uh, so this is how we're going to do which means we're going to be pulling out the stamp of majig again and I have my other piece of Whisper White cardstock. This is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths for the inner liner. And wherever I put my, anybody see my stamp of magic tool? No, of course you can't, because I put it out of the screen, so it would be out of the way. Hang on just a minute. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So you'll see we're only going to use part of the lady. You saw that, I hope. So I just really want her from right about there down so here's how I do it I find where I want her and set up my tool if I fall asleep I might regret it why well, Miss Condors I think that is a threat that sounded like a threat what'll happen what would you do to me what could you do to me okay so what I'm doing is I'm stamping the whole stamp and then I'm taking a sticky note. Is that in the screen? Yeah. And I'm covering the part of her that I do not wish to have stamp. Kind of push it down onto the acrylic block and then, you know, be a little careful because it, it can slip off and then, you know, you've got stuff where you just didn't want it. Uh-oh. I don't know what that is, Julie. I'm sorry. Is anybody else having the same problem? Uh, let me stamp this before my, my sticky note goes away. So just line it up, set it down, hold it a beat or two, and pick her up. And there you go. One more perfect, kind of truncated lady. Um, yeah, I don't know what the problem is. M Julie, maybe uh, maybe refresh your screen. That That might do it. All right, now you remember what I said about not losing your hat? <laughs> there, no, no. Ah, I lost my hat, people. Oh, hat, where'd you go, hat? Oh, see, now the thing is, if it's upside down, it's the wrong color. Darn it, darn it. I knew I would do that. I am so goofy, goofy, goofy. All right, we're just going to stamp another hat on another piece and then I can uh, oh wait look there's a hat already there okay so hopefully I've got my big hands out of the way and you can see I'm gonna cut another hat because I did exactly what I told you guys not to do I lost my hat which is similar to losing my brain and I might be doing that okay so guess what the most exciting thing about going to on stage is? Yes, you're right. I won't even wait until you guess. It's seeing the new catalog. And it's the annual catalog, and I can hardly wait. I can hardly wait. All right. So I'm going to add in my little, uh, my little outline again. Just to uh, make it pop a little bit on the page. Color it in. And then I'm going to set it very carefully on top of this block. Look, it's on top of the block, people. So when I lose it again, that's where it is. It's on top of the block. All right. So before we put that dimensional thing on there, just to make it easier to use our stamp of a jig, um, we're going to stamp the second sentiment. You're right, Julie, it is very exciting, really. Um, 
it's uh, and we get to see it the night before that's at center stage and that okay that's cool that's going to be better than the dinner that I know is going to be awesome all right we're going to stamp this one in uh, night of navy and I <laughs> there it is Knots in the floss tonight. Yes, I do need an assistant. My, I need to train my little Aussie to be an assistant. That and give him thumbs, and he'll be good to go. All right. Okay. And so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna put her, put the sentiment right about there. That looks pretty straight to me. And then we'll take our hat, yes, it's on that block, put a little bit of liquid glue on it. Just a little bit of liquid glue, Mary. And add that right over the stamped image. Alrighty. Now, we're going to double mat it as well, first onto the Daffodil Delight and then on to Night of Navy, and then it'll go in our go in our Whisper White card base. When do those of us who are not going get to see it? Um, I believe on Monday the 10th you'll get to see it. You'll get to see it online then. They'll have a PDF that you can download. And you should be able then to, uh, <clears throat> you should then be able to pre-order. I believe the pre-order starts at the same time. Amy, if I'm lying, stop me. Okay. And there's that. Let's give it a little bit of a push there. My calibrated eyeball says it's a little crooked. And then we'll pull out our uh, card that we've already made. <laughs> and we're going to put that on the inside of our card with a little bit more liquid, liquid glue. Dang it. Come on, liquid glue. Cooperate. Cooperate. Alrighty. Oh yeah, that's right. Pre-order is in May, but we get to pre-order while we're at. Probably in the evening <laughs> on Saturday. Alright, so there's the card. And we'll quick make a make our envelope. Um, I won't do this now, just in the interest of time, but it's very simple. You just take another um, you take the solid circles and stamp them a couple of times in sky, soft sky. And then you take the bubbles and stamp them a couple of times in night of navy. And then um, on the envelope flap, we're going to put another piece of the uh, Sending Love DSP. And I will do that one one time for you so that you can see again. See what I screwed up there? Mm -mm -mm. That's why I go through whisper white envelopes like nobody's business. So to put a little custom envelope flap, just run a line of liquid glue around the edge. Place your DSP over the flap, lining up the straight edge with the top of the flap. Give it a little burnish, and then pull out your fussy cutting skills again. Only this one is not very difficult. Remember, keep your paper up against the V of the scissors. Move the paper with your other hand that's holding the paper versus moving the scissors so much. And bing, bada, boom. One each custom envelope flap. And then for this particular card, I would then... Um, will Mary have her pre-pre-order done before she leaves Savannah? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. My credit card is already screaming. It doesn't even know what's coming. 
So the final thing to do for this, besides put your uh, decorations on the front, is to use your Stampin' Right marker in Daffodil Delight and color everything on this flap except the white dots so that it looks just like her sundress does. Easy peasy, nice and squeezy. Um, this was kind of interesting. These colors were not colors I had put together, but that was the challenge for the blog hop, and so that's what we did, right? I hope y'all were there today and had a chance to look and maybe donate a little bit to Autism Matters. So, does anybody have any questions? I'll leave it up for just a few more minutes, um, and then I will shut it down. The video will be on YouTube before the end of the evening, and it will be... Uh, I'll put a link into today's blog post for it um, so that you can look at it again if you like. All right, folks, I will. Yes, Karen, I do always do the envelope. I just don't like a naked envelope. Once I figured it out that I could make them coordinate, I've never looked back. All right, I, can't, I just don't even think it's done until I've decorated the envelope. All right, ladies, I certainly do appreciate you taking a few minutes here with me tonight. Uh, 41 minutes, not so bad. I rambled a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm going out. I'll stay up on my Facebook page if you have any questions or comments. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.